Well, hello, this is David Bonson, and I'm not doing Dividend Cafe this week. I'm coming to you here from the British Virgin Isles, where I'm here on a cruise with my three kids and my beautiful wife, Jolene, where the kids are off uh, school this week for spring break. So we're on a little family vacation, but my extremely competent partners, Brian Seitel and Kimberly Davis, are going to be bringing you this week's video commentary. So I'll be back in the saddle next week. And please do check out DividendCafe.com and watch the video from Brian and Kimberly. And uh, bon voyage. Thank you, David. Hello, my name is Brian Seitel. I'm a partner here at the Bonson Group. And I'm joined here with Kimberly Davis, also a partner. We welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. We've got uh, uh, some some good uh, kind of global macro information to discuss, and I know Kimberly's got some comments on first quarter. So the good news is, guys, is that Q1 was an absolutely solid results a quarter, and even perma bears had a hard time saying anything bad about it. Why is that? Well, it's because of Trumpian momentum and it was a good, solid earnings expectation result. So everybody was pretty happy. What, so it leads us to what do the markets want to see in the future? The markets need to understand not only politics, but the policy involved. So it's not just what's going on with Trump and all of his political machinations, but what is the policy that he's implementing? We believe one strong story right now is the energy infrastructure. It's a major story because we believe that is an area that Trump will get his way. And that will not only benefit the economy and the broad market, but it will, it, it will very much benefit that sector. And that leads us to more politics and more policy discussion on the other side of the pond. What's going on globally? Well, cette élection me fait peur. That's what David says in the Dividend Cafe. He's saying the French election kind of scares him a bit. But don't really believe what he says because he thinks it's already baked into the market and the market prices as they are today. However, it is a tighter race, race than expected. It has a little bit of a reflection to the Brexit uh, moment last year around June of 2016. It's a, close, it's a very close and contentious race and the Euro skeptics are starting to get a lot of power over there and they're really having an influence in the election. However, um, we believe that it's probably going to be a slightly left of center candidate that wins. But in the event that doesn't happen and there's an event, we don't really think it's going to affect the, the market here in the United States, although, um, you know, it could get a, get a lot of press. So on that note, I'm going to turn it over to my partner, Brian, and he's <laughs> going to pick up with some more information that you might find interesting. No, that's great, Kim. Yeah, it, it, you know, we, we try to tie some of these... Uh, you know, political environment uh, and, and things happening uh, with kind of a, a historical perspective in this week's Dividend Cafe as well. There's a kind of a section in there um, with a chart about uh, a generation of investing. And it, it's, you know, it, you kind of look back over um, a, a period of time, 50 years, and, and look at interest rates, even longer than that, 75 years, look at interest rates and all these different political environments and, and different ec economic outcomes and how those rates went up and down. You kind of had a collapse in rates, obviously, with Great Depression. You had sort of a rebound through the 40s, 50s, 60s, through stagflation in the 70s with Paul Volcker and, 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 and Reagan uh, you know, uh, with strong dollar policy. But really, since 1982, you've had that kind of peak in interest rates. And since then, they've basically been going down ever since. And we kind of talk about that this week and, and why that's important. Um, it's a 35-year period of decreasing interest rates. And it, it has ramifications for lots of asset classes. If you think about housing, for example, it, it becomes more affordable. You know, lower, the lower rates are, the, the more house you can buy and, and supportive of prices. Same thing for the bond market. You get decreasing interest rates. You get rising bond prices. They, they move inversely with one another. And so for a full generation, you had sort of that backdrop of, of environment. And, and, and now today, you know, we're 2017 and we've got 10-year treasury sitting at about 2.28%. It's up slightly, but um, it's, it's something that we think about when we put money to work in our bond portfolios quite a bit, um, just from the risk reward perspective of, you know, rates. Um, but, uh, interest rate sensitive investments like bonds and so we've kind of earmarked that selection of, of the portfolio and more of a shorter duration uh, part of the portfolio and so you know the, these these themes the political themes different sectors that will do do better or worse for example energy how that relates to interest rates 
and then the perspective of that over a long period of time are, are all things that are important to us here at the Bonds Group as we're allocating uh, client portfolio money. Um, so, um, Kimberly, did you have uh, something to say as well about? Um, well, we have um, managed our bond portfolio, focusing a lot on, as Brian mentioned, the short duration bonds, taking on more credit risk than interest rate risk. And that's something that I think uh, we have been focusing on to kind of circumnavigate that tricky environment. Um, and I don't know if you have anything else? Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to tie it in and sort of to, to, to end it with this. We have a chart of the week that we put in there yes. um, in the Dividend Cafe, and it's really not so much a chart as a kind of a spreadsheet uh, from our partners at Strategus, but it basically is showing um, other tops in markets. So we had the last two not most notable, 2000 and 2007. You know, what was going on in different sectors of the market? What, you know, if we look back in time, always, you know, hindsight is 2020, but how does that compare to today? And, and when you look at things like kind of a euphoric environment with speculative buying, you had that in 2000, you certainly had it in 2007, you certainly do not have that in 2017. Uh, when you look at things like M&A and IPO activities, you had these really, these boom times in 2000, 2007, really not have that at all right now. I mean, 2015, you had to pick up an M&A, but 16 was very dry and 17 starting off slow too. So we kind of put these things in perspective. Are, are, do we feel like we're at the top of a market here? Does it feel euphoric? Does it feel like it's kind of running away and, and we should kind of heed that type of risk? And it really doesn't. And there was a, a perspective that I wrote about in an internal memo a week ago or so about um, kind, of, kind of why that is. You know, what, why, why since this market has gone up 300% now since the low of three years and 32 days ago, or I'm sorry, eight years, eight years and 32 days ago, but who's <laughs> counting? Um, why, why, have, why, why aren't we euphoric? Why don't we feel better? And, and if you look at it, it's because, you know, the start of the century in 2000, we had a 50% drawdown in 2000 and 2002. We had another 50% drawdown in 2007. If you actually annualize the S&P 500 return through the turn of the century, 21st century until today, it's a 4.5% rate of return. So our, our point to saying this and to kind of going over it is, that um, we, we the, the, you know, we, we just don't see a lot of this kind of hyper bubbleicious um, uh, info in the, in the market right now to kind of give us a, a, a tip of the hat that, that this bull market is over. Um, is it long in the tooth? Maybe, but it uh, doesn't mean that there's not farther to go with it. And um, with that, I, I hope you uh, enjoyed reading this week's Dividend Cafe. We certainly enjoyed participating in it. I know David's out uh, enjoying his family and, and much deserved time off. and. Uh, we wish him well and, and look forward to coming back. And uh, with that, uh, uh, thanks. Have a great week. Great and, and happy Easter to you and your family. Thank you. Happy Easter and good news from the Bonson Group. <laughs>